Did you know about 50% of the world's habitable land surface is used for agriculture? What about the fact that 70% of the world's fresh water goes to agriculture? And we still have starvation, thirst and malnutrition. How can we possibly achieve the gargantuan task of feeding everyone? Is it even possible? What about the environment and nature if we achieve it? Well, the 2020s are going to herald a change where we could use radically less land, a fraction of the water and energy, and all for a cheaper and superior product that is cruelty free and environmentally sound. Let me share the great news. Currently, livestock is the world's largest user of land resources. Grazing land and crop dedicated to the production of animal feed represents almost 80% of all agricultural land. Animal feed crops are grown in one third of the total crop land, and the total land area occupied by pasture is equivalent to 26% of the ice-free terrestrial surface. The water footprint for meat and all farming is equally enormous. Vegetables have a footprint of about 322 litres per kilogram. Fruits come in at 962. Chicken more than quadruples that at 4,325 litres per kilogram. Pork comes in next at 5,988. Sheep and goats come in just after that at 8,763. And finally, beef at an eye-watering 15,415 litres per kilogram, almost 50 times that of vegetables. And those animals are fed one third of the world's grain. Then we consider the types of water pollution the sector creates, such as nutrient runoff, like nitrogen and phosphorus from fertilizers and animal excretia, pesticides, sediment, organic matter and other oxygen demanding substances such as plant matter and livestock excretia, pathogens like E. coli, metals such as selenium, and newer emerging pollutants such as drug residues, hormones and feed additives. And the impacts are wide reaching. Eutrophication is caused by excesses of nutrients and organic matter in water such as animal feces, leftover feed and crop residues, which cause algae and plants to grow excessively and use up all the oxygen at the expense of all other species. Pesticide pollution can kill weeds and insects far away from the agricultural area with impacts that may be felt all the way up the food chain. We already hear all the time about declining insect numbers. This is not a good sign. And then there is antibiotic use in animals with water pollution by antibiotics, which continue to have an active life even after going through the animal and into the water. And then there is what it does to the meat you are eating, or to you, in fact. And then there is the taste, the flavour, the texture, the nutrient composition, all the bits that make eating fun and good for your health. You see, even here we have been cheated because much of the meat and many of the crops that dominate our agriculture, well, they're not the tastiest or the most nutritious of all the varieties we could be enjoying. They are the ones that grow quickest, get the biggest and can withstand extensive travel globally without damage or disease occurring. The animals that were bred were the ones that could be kept inside all the time and fed the cheapest of ingredients and put on the most muscle in the shortest time. A chicken, for instance, used to take 112 days or more to grow before market and would weigh about a kilogram, maybe 1.5. They now take just 48 days to get to three kilograms. The choices made during breed development were not thinking of the customer to give them the best quality, but purely to make the cheapest product possible that would generate the most profit. Anyway, 
This is not about laying blame. It is about creating the future. So if I were to say to you, what does all this have in common with beer and diabetes? What would you say? Well, it is fermentation. Now, we first mastered fermentation many thousands of years ago, such as with beer, possibly one of our finest inventions, but that's enough of that. It was using fermentation to produce insulin in the 1980s that saved the lives of 23 and a half thousand animals that died each year to make it. It eliminated the old way of doing things in 13 years. Well, precision fermentation is about using proteins instead. Let's think about milk first. Milk is 3.3% solid proteins. The rest is water at 87.7%, sugar at 4.9% and fats at 3.4%. You only need to grow that 3.3% to disrupt the whole dairy industry. You see, the vast majority of the milk that is produced goes into protein shakes, powders and snack bars and other dried formats. Once it becomes price competitive, it will take away market share, reducing the economies of scale that the dairy industry have been enjoying for all this time. However, as a disruptor was at that price with zero market share, as they grow, they will enjoy new technologies and economies of scale, which makes the old way even less competitive. The industry will be disrupted without the consumer even needing to do a thing, just purely relying on economics and convenience. Precision fermentation uses only 1% of the land, which can be even situated underground and out of sight. It uses about 4% of the feed, about 10% of the water, and 20% of the energy, and these figures will only get better with time. Indeed, the costs associated with it are improving at a rate of 100 times per decade. Now, it is currently more expensive than traditional meat and fish, but the price is dropping very fast. The current projections are for milk to reach price parity with dairy animals by 2024, maybe 2025. Then within another five years, by 2030, it will be 80% lower in costs again. Dairy will have seen its costs rising, and by 2030, the dairy industry may well be facing bankruptcy. Meat and fish are only a few years behind those dates. Just 2% of a burger is the protein that needs to be fermented. That is all that is needed and it can occur right next door to where it is needed, reducing transport costs massively. By 2030, there will be 50% less cows and by 2035, 90% less. The global meat industry using animals will be in steep decline, just like coal and diesel cars are now. We will free up huge areas of habitable surface to be rewilded for the benefit of all. The costs will reduce, the nutrition can be carefully controlled and optimized, as can the taste and all other factors whilst the environmental impact is reduced. More food and more drinking water for everyone. Now that's what I call a win. Do you not agree? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit like if you like this and subscribe if you have not already. Thank you for dropping by.